All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got another video for you on relocating to the Dallas Fort Worth area, relocating to Texas, but specifically uh, outside of the city limits. So Mason Goss is here who typically produces our radio show and almost all of our videos. And he's going to pepper me a little bit and just kind of help me further describe and explain what uh what what texas has to offer and specifically the dallas fort worth area i've got my texas background so i do look like i'm floating a little bit uh, but just to stay in theme on this one we'll keep the background up so um let me start by saying uh texas is obviously a very 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 large state uh from a lot of ways especially just landmass, right so there's a lot of different regions and parts of Texas that uh, act and operate quite differently, right? So you got everything from far South Texas, which um, is, you know, borders Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico and is um, a, you know, borderline tropical climate, just super, super hot. Uh, and then you've got the far Northern reaches of the Panhandle, which is much more of sort of a Midwest type climate. Uh, they can get, you know, snow and high winds and all that kind of stuff. And then we've got everything in between, right? So uh, Northeast uh, Texas, you border Louisiana and you get into more of kind of piney woods, swampy type stuff. And then Central Texas, North Central Texas, uh, where we are, uh, Red River bordering Oklahoma, all kinds of stuff. Way out West, you got a little bit of everything. You got everything from, you know, Big Ben, rock formations, desert, West Texas, tumbleweed and all that kind of stuff. So we, we've got it all. But when we talk about outside the city limits, there's two big things that come to mind for me, and you can echo this or, or tell me if there's anything different, Mason. But number one, you've got big land, right? Farms, ranches, you know, barbed wire fences, large plots of land. I would say 20 acres and above, right? Now, there's thousands and thousands of acres, properties with thousands of acres. Most of them are probably in the hundreds, and then there's certainly lots that have dozens and dozens. And then the second part of that is your acreage property, which is basically a giant yard, right? And I would say that's everything from like half an acre or an acre up to the 20 acre point, right? So you're no longer in a traditional neighborhood. You're probably on the edge outside the city limits, not necessarily, but most of those types of properties are. Um, but I think when someone might be considering a move to the area, and they're thinking about getting outside the city limits, they're probably thinking about that smaller acreage property, but by all means, there's the large acreage farm and ranch uh, aspect of it as well. Uh, there's tons to share here, but Mason, real quick, what, are your, what do you think people would want to know or questions they might have on those two or, or any other property type? Uh, I think we can drill down to kind of DFW because that's where we're at. Right. And I think a lot of our viewers too have, uh, you know, looked at Dallas, looked at Fort Worth, looked at the surrounding cities and uh, thought, hey, is there a place I can get land? I know Texas is known for its land. Is there a place around this that I can grab some land? but also be able to be within spitting distance of the city. Hey, come uh, on now. Solid play, <laughs> spitting distance. Uh, um, what, what are the areas that come to mind when you yeah. think of, hey, I want a little bit of land, but I want to be able to get into, you know, where I'm working? Yeah, so, um, you know, let, let's, let's take this from two angles. Let's start with the smaller acreage type deals. Um, let's say you're looking for one to 20 acres and let's just kind of make our way around the Metroplex, right? Um, do that again. So, I liked how it kind of phased through. Swirl. It's a very clear image when I do this. <laughs> anyway, we're going to keep that Texas background up. So, uh, let's just kind of start to the East, right? So on the Dallas side of the Metroplex, when you kind of think due East, you're starting to think things like Rockwall, Rowlett, uh, Mesquite, Sunnyvale, Fate, Royce City, if you go farther, far enough. Obviously, somebody could look at a map and see all this. But these are the types of cities. Now, to be clear, you could go out to Royce City and find something in the city limits. Um, but if you're looking for small acreage that's not in a large city, which is basically what we're talking about, 
those are some of the communities to the east that are really popular. Northeast, you can get pretty close in as far as a commute and still find some nice uh, acreage home site communities that aren't necessarily neighborhoods. There are some neighborhoods with one or two or five acre plots. And there's also just some open land where people have varying sizes of properties out in Parker, Nevada, Lucas, um, up into uh, Fairview, uh, and it, you know, it just keeps going out to Bonham, you know, and then on the north side where McKinney and Frisco have really created this whole new extension of the Metroplex where they've been there for a long time. But as they've grown up big, those are no longer thought of as an outside the city city. Those are now big cities of their own. So to get beyond those, you're now thinking about um, even cities like Sherman as a little bit larger. Uh, some areas around there, Van Alstine. Go Kangaroos. My, yeah, uh, my dad went to Austin, Austin College, College, misleading, not in Austin. In Sherman. In Sherman. Uh, and they are the Kangaroos. That's right, go Roos. But then you're thinking about north of Prosper, some areas like Salina, uh, Melissa, uh, as smaller outlying areas up there. Um, as you make your way over to Denton, again, you've got to go even further because Denton is a large city now. Um, it's been a big city for a while, but obviously it, it's really, really exploded. Um, so uh, to, get, to, to get much further north of Denton and you're getting into Oklahoma, right? So as you kind of make your way around and come back in a little bit, uh, what used to be small suburbs that have really grown up like South Lake and Colleyville, uh, you can get out to Lake Worth, um, you know, Keller's become pretty big. So you're going to want to get out a little further from that. As you get pretty much due west of Dallas Fort Worth, you've got some big master plan communities and then kind of the next ring out is Alito. You know, that's another city that's really growing up. Then Weatherford beyond there starts to be that kind of out of the ring area. Benbrook is one of those kind of borderline communities where it's really getting sucked into the inner ring, but there's still acreage property available. South of there, cities like Bedford, and then you can get down into Granberry, Grand Prairie, and, you know, lots of little bitty towns that we're obviously not talking about that have options for this. But as you make your way around, those are some of the little pockets and magnets. And then you got to get further south of DeSoto to really get into the outside the ring again. And then uh, you've got some little pockets where you could be closer in, but feel further out like Cedar Hill and some things like that. So if you're watching this video and you're wondering what the heck we're talking about, you know, pull up a Google map real quick and just kind of look at that outer ring of the area in Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth to be specific. You're going to have options like that in pretty much every major city where within an hour of your major downtown area, you're going to have the availability, the opportunity to get five or six or seven acres. Now, cost-wise, obviously that five acres an hour from downtown Dallas is going to be almost always more costly than five acres would be three hours from downtown Dallas. And that's true due east or due west. Now, you can't really do that to the south in Dallas because as soon as you head out of Dallas going to the south, you're headed towards Houston. And so there's not a whole lot uh, in between the two that is truly, you know, affordable raw land anymore. You really, yeah, ironically, the dead center is called Centerville. It's not ironic, it's literal, Centerville. Um, but, you know, the popularity of those two cities has, has caused it to be where there's really nothing in between that is cheap land, right? Uh, so we're kind of bouncing around the idea, but when you get out into the rural areas in Texas, um, even those areas are really growing. So a lot of times you're seeing big, nice, uh, newer schools, high schools, uh, school complexes where you have a junior high, uh, an elementary, junior high, and high school all in one complex of really, really nice facilities. Um, it's actually not an abnormal like Mason just did to, to name a mascot from a small town football team because some of those, uh, well, small town sports program, but so, some of those schools have pretty competitive football programs in Texas. It's not, uh, it's not unheard of the old Friday Night Lights saying that high school football in Texas is a pretty big deal. My dad so, and I are also a little bit of mascot geeks. My yeah. dad had started a had a business. He had a, a lot. Yeah, he, he had a business where he sold plush mascots to schools. So he has a uh, talent for you can name pretty much any city. Yeah, and I think He's I've got, inherited got some of that into my genes. <laughs> but, uh, I guess uh, the next question I have is, yeah. what is the closest you can get to kind of? Dallas or Fort Worth and still have land? Are there, 
any well so so i'll, I'll give does you that make sense it might be yeah, no, kind it, of... it does it there's a way it doesn't because there there's still some raw land pockets you know that have been developed all around and they're there now those are millions and millions and millions of dollars for smaller pieces of property and then you know tens or not hundreds of millions of dollars for large property but what what most people would look at as a residential opportunity if you're in the dallas fort worth area on the dallas side you, the, the closest you could be and get truly raw land is probably southeast and part of that has to do with the trinity river coming through there so it's actually not a very highly populated area it's it's quite industrial um and then there are some pockets of land there where you could be 15 minutes from downtown dallas and have availability of raw land um it's not you know, necessarily beautiful scenery with a lot of, um, you know, residential in the area, but there are pockets of some really pretty land. Now, you know, the opposite extreme would be to go due north, right? Again, there would be some pockets of opportunity, but there's so much development. And then certainly it's, it's difficult to go west of Dallas or east of Fort Worth because the two giant cities blur together in the middle. There are plenty of towns and cities in the middle, but there's very little raw residential land where somebody would have 20 or 30 acres in the middle because it's all so developed. I mean, Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport is in the middle. So uh, on the Fort Worth side, um, you're going to have options. Again, probably your best options are going to be due south or northwest uh, for access to some raw land. Now, Due West is an option, but it's really become a highly desirable option. And so a lot of that land has been bought up by developers, both residential and commercial and industrial, to be honest with you. So uh, hopefully this information helps. Obviously, it's kind of a smattering, a peppering of information about, again, with the hands in the, in the video, uh, but information just about what does it look like to maybe get a little bit of land and near, uh, live near DFW. You know, I would be careful not to talk about price here because it certainly varies everywhere. But the very absolute entry level of a price per acre for um, multi-acre properties uh, that would be considered a residential option uh, with a commute into Dallas or Fort Worth is really kind of the $10,000 per acre type situation. Now, if you're looking at a single acre or two acre where it's really thought of more like a large lot, you're gonna be looking at multiples of that. But if you were looking at, hey, could I go buy 25 acres, you might be able to do that for 250,000, something like that. Not including if there's a house on the- on Correct, the we're talking raw land right now, yeah. So if you were to be find, if you were to find 25 acres with a nice home on it, I mean, that, that alone could easily be well over a million dollars. If you're looking at a reasonable, uh, pre, you know, resale type home that's in adequate condition, you know, probably looking at the half million dollar point and beyond. But there's exceptions to every rule. Uh, I would say certainly more so in Dallas, Fort Worth than many other areas, that raw land, um, I'm, I'm going to say dream, you know, in a lot of ways, that's our dream. We live on a couple acres. We technically are in the city limits. We're in an area that until recently was considered that outer ring, but it has grown up quite a bit. So we're, we're probably one ring two rings in from the edge now. And some people are looking for that. And there's, of course, I could name a ton of cities that would meet that need too. I've actually shot a lot of other videos on that type of stuff. So make sure you do check out the rest of our channel here. We have one on, uh, on Saxe, which is actually exactly where you live. Yeah. About bigger lots. Right. right. And we have videos on Benbrook and Alito. And I think we've talked a lot about Walsh Ranch and Keller and Wiley and, uh, Parker and, you know, a lot of these cities that I've referenced uh, today on this video. But if you have questions about land, uh, especially in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, drop those in the comments below. We'll either shoot another video for you about that or we'll answer them down in the comments or if we need to take it offline. Dude, uh, pick one me. On one I got a question. And help you out. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. May I need to lean in. Everyone be a little more quiet. Todd, can you give us your secret area where you if if you were moving to the area where would you pick you personally and maybe a general for everyone but can let you me, give us that secret let us in i will i will whisper that answer to that secret but let me answer your question with a question give me a budget maybe we'll do this on a couple of different budgets but let's give me a budget to start with 
And I'll tell you my favorite place to spend that budget. All right, we'll go 500,000. We'll start with that. If you had $500,000 and you wanted to be loosely near Dallas or Fort Worth right now, I would look in Fairview. Uh, it's a community northeast of Dallas, uh, just kind of on the edge of Allen. And it's, it's the merging of two worlds. On the west side, you have Allen, which is right along the main Central Expressway, Highway 75, which basically goes all the way from Galveston on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, all the way up into Oklahoma, all the way through Texas. It's I-45 in Houston, 75 in Dallas, but it's the same road. So there's a ton of activity and brand new restaurant, entertainment, retail, outlet mall, all that stuff happening right here on the west edge. And then the eastern edge is a transition into East Texas, right? It's the beginning of the countryside, the beginning of some rolling hills, um, one of the only natural lakes in Texas, plus a couple man-made lakes. So it's, this, it's the merging of the countryside and the city and you get some very new, clean, awesome retail on the city side, but still a smaller part of the city. And then you get some beautiful rolling country. You get an excellent school district. You get some beautifully well-maintained small acreage properties and a handful of large acreage properties remaining. And uh, there's not a lot to complain about. Now, 500,000 is, is a feasible budget for a smaller, nice property over there. There are multi-million dollar properties with regularity out there. And the beginning entry point is probably about 450. So you're, you're, you're just beyond the entry point there, but that would be a place that just right off the top of my mind, if I were kind of dreaming up uh, what a lot of people would view as a really great option, I would look at Fairview. There's some really cool over 55 communities there as well. Okay, I got two more budgets, all right. right? So 300 to 400. Okay, 300 to 400. Is that even possible? It is possible. Um, it's, there's obviously fewer options the lower we go with budget and when we're talking about land. So if you're talking 300 to 400,000, uh, I'll give you two answers. To stay on that east side, um, Saxy is a really good option. I've heard um, of it. That budget's not going to take you very far in Saxy, but from time to time, um, in that probably 375 ish range, you could probably get one acre, uh, maybe an acre and a half. Uh, if you have a, a real estate professional helping you. <laughs> yeah. Just throwing that yeah, out there. You're going to want help. Um, and then on the West side, Alito is super attractive and Benbrook. Benbrook is Southwest of Fort Worth. Alito is pretty much due East. Both of them probably just right at, if not just under 400, uh, so that 350 to 400 budget would, would get you an entry level property there. Benbrook might be a little bit easier to get into at that budget, uh, but both are going to be within that commute to the big city, but also get you that land. Let's do one more budget, see what happens. Okay, we'll do the million, right around the million dollar budget. Okay, so I would, I would, for, I would easily be happy trying to spend that million back in Fairview, like I talked about, or Alito or Benbrook, but uniquely if I had um, see with a million it gets tricky because now you're thinking about I might just want to buy the raw land and build something custom because I can I can build something pretty incredible it's, true. it's a good option. Um, and it would just depend on do I care about schools and things like that so there's some gorgeous land northwest of Fort Worth that hasn't been fully developed and built out yet. I would definitely look there. You're getting out into West Texas with a little bit more of a rolling hill type scenery. Uh, and it's, in my opinion, some of the prettiest landscape that Dallas Fort Worth has to offer. Um, I would also, depending on how far someone's willing to drive, I would look at Lake Levon. Uh, which is kind of Nevada is one city out there. Not um, Nevada. Some people call it Nevada. It's pronounced Nevada if you live around here, but it is spelled the same as that state where Las Vegas is. Um, so um, uh, Lake Levon is not a city, but I, would, I might try to spend that money being on some water that's still a pretty close drive in. Now you could do that in Rockwall or Rowlett, but that's, that's, those are, have both become fairly sizable cities. And we're talking about kind of getting out beyond that. So I would look at Lake Levon as a city that a lot of people don't think about. Great fishing lake uh, and some open land still available. 
That was good stuff, Todd. Yeah, doing what we can to give you some insight as to what it might look like to make a move to the area. So we'll keep making videos like this to get you information. But if you're thinking about outside the city limits, smaller town or no town, those are some good insights for you to check out and do some further research on. We have videos on just about every one of those cities we named. But definitely comment below. Ask us your questions. Give us your feedback. We'll shoot some more videos for you. Or we'll have a conversation with you down in the comments. Or we'll take it offline and help you one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, if you're thinking about buying or selling a property in the area, we would absolutely be honored to earn your trust and help you with that. Our contact information is below. There's plenty of links and phone numbers. You can always just find us online at overunderagent.com, overunder. I'm going to give I'm going to give my big pitch real quick. I just okay. bought a house with the team and it was a fantastic experience. Uh, I just I had it was so smooth. Got us a great deal right in the area we wanted to go. Uh, me and my wife are going to fix up a house. I mean, Todd, you know, Todd says it every time. Hey, if you want to help you, you can, but just take it from me. Take it from Todd. We can help you get, yep. you know, the level of expertise that you can get from a doctor, a CPA, but that, but for real, real estate, right? Yep. And I think that's what you need to kind of figure out the DFW area. It's, it's vast. There's so much going yep. on that you need someone helping you guide, guide you through the process. You can't well, just do it I, all yourself. It's really difficult. I appreciate difficult you to doing do. that. It, you make a good point. You know, there's a lot of like, we're not going to hype how you choose an agent. Obviously, we're happy. We want to help you. We want to grow our business. But um, when you're new to an entire area like this, and you might literally be saying, hey, we want 10 acres. We're willing to go either side anywhere. That actually makes it much more difficult to choose an agent that really can be helpful for you because most agents, they kind of know the area they live. And Dallas Fort Worth is a massive area. So having, as a company, having an office in Fort Worth and an office on the Dallas side is, is really, really helpful. So thank you for pointing that out, Mason. If we can help you, let us know, overunderagent.com. If you like the video, like it. If you think it would help someone you know, share it with them. Make sure you subscribe and click that little bell, and that will just notify you every time we make a new video. You don't have to watch them all, but if you see one that, that fits what you're looking for, It'll make life a little bit easier for you. It'll us. help us uh, afford a green screen behind Todd so he doesn't have to keep <laughs> using these janky backgrounds. All right. Have a fantastic one. We'll talk to you on the next one.